from rumors about a big mysterious WWE return to his disastrous first run that was marred by injuries and scandals. This is what we know about Mr. Kennedy's WWE. Starting by addressing the rumors. In a candid conversation with Kurt Angle on his podcast, The Kurt Angle Show, Kennedy was asked if he was shocked that WWE hadn't come knocking for his return. And guess what? According to Ken, he wasn't surprised in the slightest. He admitted with a touch of self-awareness that he may have let slip some colorful language on his way out the door. Hey, we've all been there, right? But he understands that the door to WWE remains closed. Still, deep down, he'd love to step back into that square circle someday. See, it turns out that Kennedy was approached by WWE producer Sean Devari, who asked if he wanted a shot at the Royal Rumble. But our man Kennedy, being the honest chap he is, declined the offer. Why, you ask? He was feeling a bit out of shape at the time. A plus for honesty, huh? But from the looks of it, he's ready now. So what's the holdup? Pick up that damn phone, Papa H. Well, the timing might not entirely be in Kennedy's favor right now. Sure, since being named the head of creative and talent relations in June of last year, Triple H has kind of gone on a rehiring spree. We've seen several past superstars, such as Karrion Cross, EO Sky, Johnny Gargano, and even Bray Wyatt make their comebacks after being let go during the McMahon regime. So there's no doubt that Trips could just go and scoop up Mr. Kennedy for another run, like the rest of the names I just mentioned. There's one thing stopping him though, the WWE's recent hiring freeze. See, according to reports from Fightful Select, WWE higher-ups have emphasized the existence of an effective hiring freeze since the start of 2023, even if the term itself hasn't been officially used. The reasons behind this freeze are closely tied to the corporate changes in the sale of the company. With Vince McMahon's return, the rehiring of George Barrios and Michelle Wilson, and the subsequent sale of WWE to Endeavor, the organization has undergone significant shifts in leadership and structure. As a result, the hiring landscape has also been impacted, and WWE has put a temporary hold on bringing in new talents. However, it's worth noting that despite the freeze, WWE has maintained communication with talents they're interested in, assuring them of potential future opportunities. Wrestlers like EJ Nduka, Jay White, Hikuleo, Tama Tonga, and Naomi were all on WWE's radar. But due to the corporate moves taking place, none of the signings came to fruition. But just the fact that they're still in conversations with talent suggests that the company is actively considering future hires once the dust settles. So while the hiring freeze may pose a hurdle to Mr. Kennedy's return for now, the door hasn't been completely shut, and there's still a glimmer of hope for a comeback when the hiring freeze finally thaws. Till that happens though, let's talk about what Ken's role could be upon his hypothetical return. Now, despite the setbacks of injuries and suspensions, Mr. Kennedy could have been a megastar in the late 2000s and early 2010s. The grand visions that WWE had for him, however, didn't quite come to fruition. Multiple injuries dashed his dreams of holding that coveted world championship title. While a suspension cruelly robbed him of the chance to be Mr. McMahon's secret son in one of the late 2000s biggest storylines, instead, they passed the torch to none other than Hornswoggle? After all, it was the 2000s. But fear not, despite being a proud 47-year-old, Ken might just have a few surprises left up his sleeve. And while world championships may be out of reach, there's still room for Mr. Kennedy in the WWE. One option could be for him to take on a mentorship or coaching role. We've seen wrestlers like Jamie Noble and Joey Mercury transition into behind-the-scenes positions and producers. They use their in-ring experience and knowledge to guide and shape the younger talent, helping them fine-tune their skills and craft compelling storylines. Imagine Kennedy in the backstage area, sharing his wisdom, telling captivating stories from his own career, and offering valuable advice to the up-and-coming superstars. That could do wonders for the next generation of wrestlers. Or maybe he could take a page out of Matt Bloom's notebook and become a coach. Bloom has made a significant impact as the head coach of WWE's Performance Center. Perhaps Kennedy could do something similar. But then again, it would definitely make more sense to have a guy like Ken on TV. Like, are we forgetting his insane mic skills? Kennedy is probably one of the best promoters in the business. That's one of the reasons he was so overrated back in the 2000s. I mean, the guy's gimmick was literally carrying a microphone to the ring. So why not put that gift of gab to good use? Kennedy could become an on-screen personality, injecting electricity into segments, conducting interviews, or even stepping into the broadcast booth as a color commentator, much like Taz in AEW. Just imagine the excitement he would bring, spicing up the action with his quick wit and insightful commentary. He could be the voice that adds an extra layer of excitement to every match. But of course, Ken's still a wrestler at heart, 
and while he may not be chasing world championships anymore, he could still step into the ring for special appearances or one-off matches. We've seen wrestlers like Shelton Benjamin make comebacks as in-ring competitors. Kennedy could do the same and remind fans of his in-ring brilliance, and perhaps even settle some unfinished business from his past. However, it's understandable if fans are a little iffy about that. Ken hasn't been a full-time in-ring performer since 2016. That's a lot of time for the ring rust to settle in. See, the last time Ken was an active wrestler was during his run in TNA, and while he had some memorable matches back then, I have to reiterate the fact that this was a very long time ago, seven years to be exact. Now, I want to be clear that this isn't a knock against Ken, but it's crucial to manage expectations. He's not someone like Shelton Benjamin, who has shown that he can still deliver fantastic matches in his late 40s. Age and time away from regular competition can have an impact on one's in-ring abilities. That being said, it doesn't mean that an in-ring return from Ken would be a complete disaster. During his time away from the mainstream wrestling scene, he did compete in various independent promotions. For example, he participated in Preston City Wrestling's Road to Glory tournament, where he had notable matches against wrestlers like Drew Galloway. He also made appearances for promotions like Insane Championship Wrestling and Ring of Honor, putting on some memorable performances. In 2019, Ken debuted for the NWA and had some promising moments, including winning an eight-man gauntlet match. However, he wasn't medically cleared to compete in the NWA World Television Championship Tournament and ended up losing his match against Tim Storm by forfeit. It's all worth mentioning that Ken has ventured into other areas of the industry. In 2017, he signed with Top Rank Boxing as a ring announcer, expanding his career beyond the wrestling ring. Considering all this, while the time away may have an impact, it doesn't mean that Ken's return would be devoid of any potential. He could still bring his experience and charisma to the table, whether it's in a coaching or mentoring role, as a charismatic on-screen personality, or in one-off matches. The key is to find the right opportunity and utilize his unique talents effectively, something the WWE unfortunately couldn't do the last time he was there. See, Mr. Kennedy made a huge impact when he debuted in late 2005, but his injuries basically ruined his career and sent him on a downward spiral. The first major setback came when Kennedy tore his latissimus dorsi in late 2005, sidelining him for around six months. Despite the setback, upon his return in June 2006, Kennedy regained momentum with upset victories over Batista and assisting the McMahons in their feud with D-Generation X. Then came that glorious moment in September when he captured the United States Championship by defeating Bobby Lashley and Finley in a triple threat match. But it was in 2007 when things got really interesting for Kennedy. He won the Money in the Bank ladder match at WrestleMania 23, earning a golden opportunity to challenge for any of the three world titles whenever he wanted. Destiny seemed to be calling his name when Undertaker suffered an injury and had to relinquish the world championship. Kennedy was scheduled to cash in his briefcase on the dead man and claim the gold. But as luck would have it, he suffered an injury of his own. The higher-ups panicked and decided to have him drop the briefcase to Edge instead. It later turned out Kennedy's injury wasn't as serious as they thought, but the damage had already been done. Kennedy's journey in WWE took more twists and turns after that. He switched brands, had rivalries with the likes of Shawn Michaels and William Regal, and dealt with more injuries and suspensions. It seemed like every time he gained momentum, something happened to derail his progress. Ultimately, Kennedy's time in WWE came to an end in 2009. There was an incident involving him and Randy Orton where things got a little too close for comfort, and Vince McMahon decided he had seen enough and the company released him. Maybe things will go better this time. So from a look at why things went wrong the first time, to rumors about a WWE return, this was what we know about Mr. Kennedy's WWE comeback.